So now we're getting pretty stoked because we've got this really, really rad simulator that allows us to replicate over and over and over and over and over again uh, the same experiment that we just ran in class with real cards, with a real stacked deck. So, and this is fantastic. The problem is if we stop right now and we look at the results that we got, essentially, this really isn't the benefit of having a non-parametric relationship. Really, what you want to have is you want to start this thing up from scratch and then actually compare it to compare it to, in this case, the actual binomial distribution. Because now, when you start from zero or one trial and build yourself up to, like as we see now, almost 1,600 trials, the data is allowed to present itself. And you can ask questions like, okay, how likely is it that we got the results that we got? So in other words, in, say, 1,586 trials, how likely is it or how, and how many of those trials would we have expected to have gotten no red cards if the deck is fair? And the emphasis, of course, on is if the deck is fair. And they're starting to now get this idea of a hypothesis test, like assuming the deck is fair kind of thing. So one thing you can do, and I should have done this earlier, I can type the word trials right there next to the, the, the trial bar. And we can do is we can we can highlight that too and make it, you know, make it stand out a little bit more, maybe, maybe bold it. And maybe to draw attention to that as well, you can you can uh, gray out some of this stuff here. Oops. And one thing, you know, I just thought of something else. If if you like, and this is purely if you like, uh, in the current column, we can conditionally format that column as well with a new rule. So we can say let's let's format if we have a cell equal to one. So we went format only cells, cell value equal to one. Let's do a real a real subtle formatting on that. Maybe make it bold, maybe make the font uh, like a light red, okay? So now, when we okay out of this, now as you hold down F9, you start to see that one kind of dancing around in there. And again, purely if you want to do that. Um, the reason why that might be nice is it kind of reiterates the fact that, oh, I'm seeing an awful lot of ones pop up in two and three, and maybe that correlates to the, the highest bars here at two and three, that kind of thing, that kind of thing. So again, purely, purely optional. The important, that, and then again, that's stylistic, the important pedagogical connection, I think, is to say, okay, how likely is it that Obviously, we only saw 63 out of 1893. So let's let's create a little column over here. Let's say, what's the probability of getting no red cards out of five if the deck is fair? Okay, that's a that's a mouthful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of a I'm going to do a little bit of a merge and center. There we go. Oh, I want to make no one word. All right. So, and we can do it two different ways. We can do it empirically, whoops, empirically, which is essentially what we just did with the Monte Carlo uh, experiment. So empirically, let's make this bold. Sorry, I tend to default to stylistic changes quite often. Um, empirically, all we've got to do is we've got to take equals the number of times that we saw no red cards, which is an E7, and then divide that by the total number in our sample, which is down here in E13, and press enter. So right now, you're sitting on about 3.3%. There's a 3.3% chance of this happening. And as I mentioned to you all uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the talk, right about the time they pick the fourth or fifth card, that's when the probability of seeing no red cards at all goes from about 6% to about 3%, and it passes through that cool, like, intuitive threshold of 5%, that, that unusualness, that 19 out of 20 or that 1 out of 20, depending on how you want to look at it. And what's cool about this is you just press F9 and you watch that number become refined. Like right now, it's it's towing the line between 0.33, low 0.33, and and cr crunching down around point, uh, excuse me, 0 0.033, so 3.3% and 3.2%. And what's really cool, what's really cool is you can, if you want to, compare it to the actual probability, because you don't actually have to do this experiment. If the students have a quick recall of the binomial or even calculating sample spaces, you know the probability is equals 1 divided by 32, which is 3.125%. You can also use the binomial calculator, which is a 
maybe a topic for another another YouTube video. But you know, as you hold down this this beautiful uh, F9 button and you're watching the numbers unfold themselves, you begin to notice that this value up here, this empirical value, is beginning to hone in on this uh, this exact value that's down here, and that's pretty slick. That's that's pretty slick that you can that you can get that to that you can get that to happen, and hence the whole point of Monte Carlo approximations is to take something that you may or may not know the distribution for and create the distribution by letting the data bootstrap itself. So anyway, this is uh, the beginnings, hopefully for you, of many, many other Monte Carlo approximations, and I hope you're able to get something out of it. Thanks a lot.